Sanitarium um, has has some history, as you know, uh, is a white paper for IPS. It uh, was written primarily by Jeannie Bishop, who until just just recently was chair of the um, the IPS Education Committee. Its intent was to be a document that could be shared. I apologize, my mouth is dry. Its intent was be, to be a document that could be shared um, uh, to any planetarium, to anybody who needed reasons to bullet points, reasons in a presentation to justify their existence, uh, especially within school systems. The document, however, because it was uh, where it was written and when it was written is very US centric. And we would like to be able to expand that specifically to other areas uh, where they could get uh, as much value from that document as we can in the US. Um, and we also heard after that document was circulated, printed in Planetarian, um, and it's on the website, and I will add the link, um, that the that uh, people in other countries do not view their planetariums perhaps the same way that people in the U.S. view them. So this uh, session was intended to gather information, the anecdotal evidence from people in other areas of the world that how do their audiences view planetariums? Um, are people coming into their facilities looking for the planet room, which would be the greenhouse, which was down the hall and to the left, or were they looking for the uh, um, aquarium where the fish were, uh, not knowing what a planetarium was? So that is the kind of information we'd like to start gathering now to make this document about more valuable. Um, how do your countries view? Um, so I'll add links. Uh, there'll be a, um, I'll add links. Please be aware we do have versions in English, Spanish, Spanish, Portuguese, and French available on the website. We're always looking for more languages, uh, German especially, um, Japanese especially. So anybody in the audience, or if you know of anyone who would like to, to translate, please let us know. Okay, um, now because virtual doesn't lend itself nicely for information gathering, um, we intend to have a group discussion about that theme. And we're going to have a hallway, a Zoom hallway meeting tomorrow, noon, UTC. I will post that, um, a link in the chat. Okay, the other, um, Tom, Tomas has already introduced the, the uh, other two panelists. And we're going to start with Karo. We decided to expand this, this session into how, how the educational value of the planetarium is being used in other countries. So um, next up then is Koru. Thank you, Sean. I'm now sharing my slides. Um, Hi, I'm Karu Kimura. I um, come from Tokyo, Japan. I'm an astronomy educator and uh, associate professor at Otsuma uh, uh, Women's University. I teach earth science and science education. My talk is astronomy education in Japan, especially about elementary school curriculum and cooperate between front rooms and schools. Japan has national standards for formal education. 
people learn sub, uh, subjects under the same curriculum's objective from kindergarten to high school. We have a chance to learn astronomy subject four times. At elementary school, kids should learn sky object with a geocentric model. And at middle school, they must change their world to using the scientific method. Science education in Japan has two purposes. Understanding of natural science and creating a feeling of being familiar with nature. Being familiar with nature is a characteristic of Japanese science education. Kids are required to engage in observations and become familiar with nature at first. After that, they cultivate the mo motives for understanding nature using scientific method. For astronomy subjects, kids should observe the night sky. However, most elementary school teachers are not competent at understanding astronomy. They have negative thinking for teaching astronomy at the classroom. As far as the curriculum is concerned, most kids are able to derive problems and hypo hypotheses uh, from their observation. However, teachers explain how stars move showing them in picture in the textbook or using star wheel. In observing the moon, even others don't understand very well about the uh, phases of the moon. So sometimes teachers ask kids for their homework to observe the shape of the moon during the new moon. Schools have a program teaching astronomy. So the Ministry of Education recommends using planetarium in their area. According to research in 2015, there are 330 planetarium in Japan and most planetariums are installed mainly by many, uh, many parties uh, and belongs to Board of Education. The planetariums should be an easy to use environment for school education. The unfortunately, cooperation between planetariums and school is not working well at the moment. The reason are like a quality of school programs, operation system, teaching ability, not good understanding for formal education. So this is my last slide and conclusion. So planetarium is also useful tool for astronomy education in formal education. We can teach along the school curriculum at the planetariums. At it also includes working around teachers' weaknesses in astronomy. Kids can share information and motivation, observe safely, not depending on the weather. We can observe both geocentric and heliocentric models in the planetarium. We should work for more planetary education research about how the planetum is effective. So we need correction of a standard curriculum in each country and region. 
review program uh, program in school uh, programs in school education at the planetariums. Program development and evaluation. Professional development for younger planetarians. So we can work together. Thank you very much. Okay, Sharm? Is Sally next? Yes, I'll just uh, share my screen. Okay, there we go. Right, is everyone seeing it? Okay, great. Uh, hello, my name is Sally McFarlane and I'm a, a postdoc at the University of Cape Town. I also work with the Idea Visualization Lab where we use tools such as the Azeco Planetarium to visualize big data sets. Now, part of uh, my talk today, I'm going to be discussing the importance of uh, the importance of local content and then i'm also going to be discussing a little bit about how we're using the azico planetarium to cast new eyes on south african astronomy and speaking of south african astronomy well we've had a few uh, exciting developments lately lately so just to give you a bit of a rundown on that you can see there down at the the base of the screen there's the Southern African Large Telescope, the single largest, uh, the single largest telescope in the Southern Hemisphere with an equivalent uh, width of 10 meters. There's also Meerkat, of course, a radio telescope that consists of 64 dishes and has taken that beautiful image to the right there. The problem is, of course, though, that most of the public here in South Africa are generally unaware of these amazing achievements. And that's of course where the planetarium comes in. As we know from the educational value of the planetarium uh, IPS document, the planetarium provides a wonderful link between the public and astronomy. It, we can bring astronomy to the public and we can take the public to remote and inaccessible places such as Meerkat location. And that's also where the Azico Planetarium comes in. Now, this is where my home base is. The Azico Planetarium and Digital Dome is located in the heart of Cape Town. And uh, it's a 15 meter dome with capacity for about 140, 140 seats. So it doesn't only do public shows, it also does, uh, um, it also has a schools, dedicated schools program and also is one of the few planetarium in the world that has a dedicated and active research team. But you'll find out more about that a bit later. So the planetarium um, underwent a major digital upgrade in uh, mid 2017, where we replaced the old, beautiful old Minolta system with six 4K laser projectors that allowed us to get a total 8K pixel projection. However, the problem with this is that the old perception still persists. Well, the general public are either unaware of the new upgrade or they're unaware of the unique capabilities of a digital dome. So in order to remedy this, the Zico Planetarium and Digital Dome has put together some projects in order to update this public perception. Now, one of the projects we've got here is uh, conducted by the research team and forms part of the Data to Dome initiative. And that's effectively or efficiently visualizing big data sets to keep the public informed about current research. So that provides a link between the planetarium, the public, and scientific institutes. You'll find out more about that in a talk later today, enabling scientific research. 
You'll also find out about education research, uh, research into the effective use of the planetarium as an educational tool in undergraduate studies. That's, uh, you'll find out more about that on Friday. But I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about the education and schools program. So how we are investigating appropriate astronomy educators, not only for students, but for the educators themselves, as well as groups of field guides, tour operators, all for uh, astrotourism in South Africa. And of course, for all of this, one of the main things we need to invest our time in is looking at developing local content shows. So we want to use um, local content in order to expose and popularize South African astronomy. So just to talk a little bit more about the importance of local content, and I'm gonna go a little bit first into the schools program that I worked a bit with. And of course, you might notice some of these uh, challenges. We all have them at our planetariums. South Africa's got 11 official languages, yet our shows are mainly in English. So that is a big issue. We also, we also have the senior level gap. So the national schools curriculum pretty much only goes up to intermediate level schools with no real content, astronomy content towards senior levels. And this is a serious issue because of course, this is the time when students are starting to choose their career paths. We also have a problem with the planetarians having to become the teachers themselves. They have to, uh, because the teachers are either uninspired or don't know the curriculum um, or uh, with astronomy. So in order to combat this, we are investigating training sessions, sessions for the educators and also looking at uh, developing senior phase astronomy content. And all of this, we need to look at developing more local content in order to inspire both the teachers and the senior, levels, uh, senior level students. And this brings us to public shows. Now you might recognize some of these uh, shows. These were a selection of shows we had at the planetarium last year. And uh, unfortunately, although they're amazing shows, a lot of them, well, none of them had local South African content. We need to develop shows that uh, expose our astronomical heritage, as well as the latest res research and results. So towards that goal, uh, myself and Daniel Kunema are putting together a new South African full dome show. And uh, what we're doing there is it's going to be one of a kind. It's going to be the first of the scale and that's going to be produced for later 2020. It's hoped that having a show that has local content will generate a sense of pride in South Africa in, in generally in the world. And by doing so, we can harness this a more positive social environment within the country. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Do we have Guillerme anywhere? Yes. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Guillerme. I am the director of this planetarium over here in the south of Brazil only 60 kilometers from Uruguay. We are close to, closer to Uruguay than any city, any other city in Brazil. Uh, first, I would like to address to the value of the document, the value of the educational value document uh, from IPS. Uh, in 2013, we were awarded with uh, government funding to raise this building and buying the equipment. And we started the building in 2015 when we bought the projector. And very turbulent time came in Brazil during this, this period, a hard politic, politics in, in Brazil. And we didn't get the whole money. So we were 
really decided to have the planetarium and we started a crowdfunding and literally knocking door to door asking money to raise the building and at this time i realized that in my city very far from any other place with a planetarium or a science museum uh, people didn't know what is a planetarium and even mm -hmm. those that uh, know what is a planetarium didn't know the educational value of the planetarium. And I guess if I had this document in hands uh, when I, I was knocking door to door, uh, even, though I, uh, even though I could explain where is the value of the, the planetarium for education, uh, I guess if I had this document in hands, uh, people would uh, trust me a little more. So that's the value of this document that I would like to, to start talking. We are a university planetarium and the university was created in 2006 in a, a region that was going to a decline and a socioeconomic decline during the last decades. And the university was made to be the turning point for this region. And so this is uh, even more important value of the planetarium in this region that we are from 200, 300 uh, kilometers away from any other planetarium or science museum. As a university planetarium, we have uh, three special focus in, in our work educational uh, work with the kids that come to the planetarium, with the, our students at the university, they are our monitors. And I guess they learn much more than astronomy in the planetarium, even though they are not uh, astronomers, they are not studying for astronomy. Uh, what they learn in the planetarium is much more than astronomy. And the third one that I would like to, to mention is that I saw a lot of comments in the chat is the teachers. Uh, we have a lot of work to do with the teachers because we truly believe that uh, a teacher come to the planetarium as a tour, but uh, an engaged teacher come to the planetarium to give the students a real class uh, to learn science and be uh, wonderful to the universe. Before I finish, I would like to ask you all a favor. In the planetarium, we always finish our sessions uh, asking kids to point to the, to the sky, telling them that we have so many stars in the sky that uh, no matter where they, they point, they will hit a star. I would like to ask you all to open your cameras and point to a star with me. Please, come on, do me that favor. I want to see that. <laughs> come on, come on, everybody pointing to the stars. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to emphasize also what Sharon put in the chat, the, the Zoom address for our meeting, uh, because we were intended to, to gather information in the session, not uh, telling you these stories. So tomorrow noon UTC, come and join us. Thank you very much. Okay. Sharon, you want to add or wrap it up? Um, I don't have much more to say. I, I want to thank everybody for working so hard on this paper session. It turned out to be so confusing um, in this, this hard time. And also for, this is clapping <laughs> for everybody, if you can't tell in, in uh, sign language. Thank you. A time pleasure. for questions? Are there, is there time for questions? Uh, questions? Well, there were a lot of comments, which I think I think it was a wonderful, inspirational 
and worldwide session. I love that. US, Japan, Africa, South America, uh, how wonderful. And we all uh, discover again what unites us and uh, that we need to take care of teachers and to look at that. There were many comments here. I, I didn't see real questions, but there were wonderful comments. May, may I hand that back to you? Um, that the teachers are scared about science, but that there might be a good comment. I, I saw there was the, there's a discovery gap between generations, maybe that the adults do not really communicate with their own kids, that we also need to take care of adults. And maybe there's too much focus on kids is uh, was, was mentioned here, uh, but also training teachers uh, because there was mentioned because there are notes, they're like marketing uh, notes for us all. But maybe uh, you want to comment, some of you wants to comment, comment again on this discovery gap between generations or even on training of teachers, which are notes for bringing in the kids. Sharon? Um, I found uh, very often that people, uh, people want to be one or the other, they like to put their finger on definitions. So many people came in and said, oh, I never knew you had programs for adults. I thought you were just for kids. And getting the adults there um, is important because they continue their education. And you have to realize that when you're giving a presentation for school kids, you're also teaching their teachers. Um, subtly without telling them, but you're also teaching the teachers. Garamay, Sally, uh, Karu, Garamay. You want to comment? Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Sorry. We, we found out when we were, when I was doing planetarium shows with schools, that definitely the teachers were, were listening in and uh, that's when we came up with the idea that we have a dedicated session for educators themselves um, so that they can go back and then spread the message. Uh, okay, may I um, add, there is a question from Mark uh, again uh, on uh, Sharon's, your original comment you made. Uh, how relevant is the white paper across cultures and different educational systems. Mm. Can you all comment on that? I don't have a comment. I would love input though. I need, we, we know our own backyard so well, but I don't know Guillermo's backyard um, or Sally's backyard. And, and we need interpretation from everyone on how Planetariums are viewed from other cultures. So it's the kind of stories, the anecdotal stories that we need to start understanding all that. Karu? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I would like to, to tell you just one, one thing that I, I listen when I was asking for help to, to raise the planetarium, I listened to someone telling me that it was just to see little stars. Yeah. So he wouldn't help to raise the planetarium. And that's pretty hard to listen. I really love you pointing up and really doing something physically. I think we really need to shake people or impress people physically also. And, and you made that with your comments, but also with making us all point up and look up. Either we see the sun, our star or other stars. So let me see if there's any comments beyond people being inspired and, uh, and uh, sharing of content, the sharing of this will happen also uh, through the group, through the education committee, Sharon, maybe mm -hmm. you, you will, you're the lead for that, you will continue doing that. And 
thank you all for that. I think we are, well, we still got time, some time. Uh, and at least I want to thank also our sponsor for this hour, again, for Megastars. Maybe we can put up uh, the chart again. And uh, I thank you for this inspirational session right now. Thomas, if we have time, I saw a really important question by Carlos Molina about the inclusive programs in our planetarium. We just had a, a session about that. And we have uh, some sign language translations for our shows. We have a professor in, in our uh, team that works with uh, inclusive questions. So we are working that still the first steps, but I guess each step is valuable. And I, I, I put myself to learn a little bit about sign language and everything. I, I really learning sign language, uh, but it's amazing how uh, people just smile well when they see that they can talk to someone, even just a few words, even the name of the planets or something like that, uh, you make the difference. All right. Just looking, that question was posed, uh, posted earlier, I think, in another session you mentioned there. Yeah, important. Uh, I just look if there's any, there are no more questions I, as I can see. Uh, or there's one about, yeah, okay, that's the one you mentioned. I just see that in the end. The, there's a separate group for that. Okay. Um, so we've, if there's no further questions, thanks again. And uh, thank, uh, I already thanked our sponsor. And we have a short break of, for opening up for discussion, maybe for everybody or Michael. Yeah, we can very uh, briefly open up the the ability to unmute for the next. If few there minutes. is anybody else uh, who wants to ask a question, as you Carter here. Yeah, I, I I sort of have a question or a comment, um, and that is, uh, yeah, I wonder if I could just do this briefly. In two thousand, IPS two thousand and and Montreal, um, we we're we we're presenting sort of what the the digital data sets could do and stuff like that. We were presenting, we had um, our colleagues from uh, National Center for Supercomputing Applications with us. And we were showing things on a flat screen about what could be done in a dome. Um, and now everybody sort of understands that uh, in the planetarium community, we sail through these data sets and stuff. But it was that definition that the planetarium was about the sky and, and I, I, I felt like, wow, here we are, you know, it's jazzed up to show what we've been working on. And, and there was resistance. It's sort of like, that's not what the planetarium's about, or, or that's like, we got away from our constellations. And then the notion of bringing other content, now that we have a, essentially a, a, a view screen for any kind of content, our own museum said, the planetarium is about the stars. Don't bring in geology. Don't bring in earth science. It's about the it's about the universe. So I I still think we you know the planetarium is such a dominant thing. It's just dome, and we think of it as the night sky. So sorry if I'm rambling. It's just that I think that that's hard for people. That sort of this is what the planetarium is about. It's a it's a definition. And then also the people from the outside, oh, it's just little stars. Um, it's, it's, it's tough. And when you bring people in and they, they, you fly them over Mars or something and they go, holy crap, I, I didn't know we could really do that. So. I think it is tough, um, especially if you want to have a certain brand or mission for your dome um, to think about those other disciplines. But as I mentioned before, like there's always a connection between other disciplines. There's always chemistry and astronomy. There's always geography, geology. 
Um, so I think it's easy to make those. And if it's maybe not a um, highlight of a presentation, it can be a little, um, little bit of it, right? Well, well, it's, it's well, ultimately it's a context generator. You know, it's like, well, you know, the universe is connected to us. <laughs> you can connect everything with the stars and with, with planet Earth. Planetarium is about us, about the planet, planet Earth and us in the universe. But uh, it's really a marketing issue there too, because some of the marketing people may even uh, go in a different direction or or some authorities like the museum may force you to go in another direction. There are many, many factors there in. We, we have to define our mission. I think it's a good point. Or any comments from the panel? Looking at my watch. I only had one thing to say. I love what Carter contributed. We have to be able to take those mis those ideas that it's only the stars and that is, is a problem even within our own field. It's only the stars. And, and let our audiences know that if it wasn't for the stars, we wouldn't be here. And we need chemistry and biology and geology to understand what we're studying uh, to make sense of what we're seeing. We need all those sciences. Uh, so stars, stars are connected to everything. Everybody's star stuff. I love the planetarium because it just jumbles up everything. You realize it's it's one giant connection. It's uh, I, I when people tried to ask me what it was that we were doing in the beginning, I just said it's the Powers of Ten movie. You ever see that? But with a steering wheel, we can go anywhere we want. Excellent definition. <laughs>